Okay, so let's get started today. Uh, I, as you see from your email, okay, I've assigned QS 16.8, QS 16.9, and exercise 16.6. Okay. Now, what I'm also going to do is cover in class today the operating activity section of problem 16.3b. Okay, so what you're going to see is eventually we are going to get into calculating all the different cash flows. So we're going to start again with a little bit of review of operating activities, and then we're going to move into investing activities uh, after I talk, talk, talk about this topic. So let's, uh, you can either stop here, okay, and attempt to do problem 16.3b, the operating activity section on your own, or you can watch me do it on the whiteboard and then uh, try to do it on your own. Something, something along those lines, and then we're going to cover the investment section. So, let's look at what we have here right off the bat. Uh, so it said A. How much was paid in dividends during 2020? Well, does it give us that information? Uh, it says here we have an income statement, we have a balance sheet, uh, and then we're given some additional information. We sold non-current investments. We issued bonds for fourteen thousand. We sold equipment and we purchased equipment. So, how much was paid in dividends? Okay. So, first of all, you got to go to your opening retained earnings. Your opening retained earnings, in this case here, was forty-eight thousand one hundred sixty. What's our net income? Our net income was sixty thousand four eighty. Okay. Well, how much dividends did we pay out? We don't know. Okay. But we do know our ending retained earnings. Why? Because we can see it on the balance sheet, eighty thousand six forty. Or closing or ending retained earnings for eighty thousand six forty. So how do we go from forty eight thousand one sixty plus sixty thousand four eighty? Well, that has to be one hundred and some thousand down of eighty thousand six forty. Well, it's because we paid out a dividend. Okay. So how much did we pay out in a dividend? Forty eight one sixty. Plus sixty thousand four eighty is one hundred eight six forty. If we didn't pay out any dividends, this would be one hundred eight six forty. But we did. We had to. Have. That's why it went down. This amount here. So one hundred eight six forty minus eighty thousand six forty. We must have paid dividends of twenty. $8,000, okay? Again, that's going to be important. Okay. Now, from there, that was, that was part A. From there, what the question asked is, it said, um, prepare a statement of cash flows. Now, I'm saying we haven't gotten around to the investing section yet, nor have we gotten around to the finance section. So let's just focus on operating, okay, because that's important. I think operating is a, could be the hardest. Okay, so let's start off with our operating activity. And that's all I want us to do. Okay, so let's start with our net income. In this case, again, our net income was 60480 Now I want to make my adjustments. When I'm doing this, the first thing I want to do is I want to look on the income statement, okay, to see if we have any gains or losses, okay, or do we have any depreciation. If we have depreciation, we're going to add that back. Add back to 24000 Now, 
do we have any accounting gains or losses? Okay, well, let's see. We have a loss on the sale of equipment, 2,240. We're going to add that back. Now, do we have any, we have some investment income. Now, it should have said a gain on a sale of investment, but we can tell that there is a gain on an investment. Why? Well, let's look at this here. We sold the non-current investment on January 1st, 2020 for 16800 Okay. So, let's take a look. At the non-current investment was currently ten thousand and eighty dollars. Okay. But again, we sold we sold this thing for so sixteen thousand eight hundred minus the value of uh, ten thousand oh eight oh. We get sixty seven twenty. That's why I don't like them using the terminology investment income. Okay, investment income to me is more of a dividend because it messes us up when we go and we're trying to do a cash flow statement because we just think it's normal income, but it's not. It's, it's income gain through a sale of an investment. So you really got to watch at that wording. Okay, and I just knew that that in, in investment income, okay, was tied into the sale of the non current investment. Why? Because we went down to zero. And then you tie that in with um, transaction number one here. Sorry, not transaction number one. Transaction number two, where they sold the non-current investment for sixteen eight. Well, the difference has to be that gain. Okay, so we're going to add that gain back. Okay, and then we're going to include because again, we're only in, we're only worried about cash. Okay, we're going to recognize that sixteen eight in cash proceeds that we received in the investing section. Okay. So we're going to add back the gain on the sale of non gain on the sale of investment. We're going to subtract it actually. Okay. And that would be six thousand seven twenty. Okay. So now what we've done is we added back all of the items on the income statement, okay, or subtracted. Now let's go look at our balance sheet. Okay, so we're only going to look at our balance sheet accounts and we're, we got lucky. Why? Because they did the change for us already. Okay. So AR went up. So an increase in AR of 29680 gets subtracted. Inventory went up. An increase in inventory. So an increase gets subtracted. 17,920. That looks like that's it for current assets. Let's go to the current liabilities. AP went down. Decrease in AP. It went down, so we subtract. 9680 okay. Dividends payable. Okay. Dividends are not part of current liability. That's dividend payable. Okay. You're going to get that in the investing, sorry, in the finance section. Bonds payable. Again, that's investing. Financing. We'll get to that. So that that looks like that is it for our adjustments. Okay. So we'll take the sixty thousand four eighty. Okay. We're going to subtract the increase. Sorry, we're we're going to add back the depreciation. Add back the loss on the sale of equipment. Add back the gain on the sale of in, of the investment. Subtract the increase in AR. Subtract the increase in inventory and subtract the decrease in AP. So 
as a result, we have a net cash inflow of 22800 If you can do up to this point, great. Okay. If not, try a little more, uh, a little more questions. Okay. Again, it's just getting down the characteristics of operating activities of when you when you add back, when you subtract. Okay. But you can divide it like this. Say, okay, well, I got to do my income statement add backs and subtractions, and then I got to go focus on my balance sheet. Again, yeah, that's for the operating activity section. All right, now let's go into the investing section. Okay, so with the investing section, it's a little bit different. Uh, let's, it's it's all it's the same characteristics, right? Let's put it that way. So what we want to do, I'm just going to go find the pages. Okay, so this is 1045 to 1047. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at cash flows now from investing activities. So the first thing that we want to do is identify the changes in investing related accounts. So if we want to know what invested re investing related accounts are, well, let's go back to the beginning of the chapter and, and we'll see what those are. Okay. So if we look to page 1032, financing activities. So incoming cash flows are a result of, sorry, investing, I said financing. So incoming cash flows are the result of selling capital assets, okay. selling equity, Investments, so not strategic investments, but strategic investments. Selling debt investments, collecting principal on loans, and selling um, or discounting loans. Now, a cash outflow would be to purchase capital assets. That's mainly what we're going to see. Uh, maybe purchase equities of other companies, purchase debts of other companies, uh, and may provide a loan to a third party. But for the most part, it's strictly dealing with plant property and equipment purchases and selling investments. Okay. All right, so again, we want to, first of all, first thing we want to do is identify changes in investing related accounts, explain the differences and reconstruct the differences, okay? And then report the effect on the cash flow. All right, so let's look at a scenario here. Okay, we have a balance sheet in front of us. Now, a company, it says, a company sells us, and this is slide 32. So we're going to move on to slide 31 and slide 35. So let's look, take a look. Let's just say that the company had a, on the income statement, a loss on disposal of $6,000. But we add that back. Okay? So loss on sale of equipment, $6,000. Now we add that back. Why? Because that's not a cash transaction. So this is again, slide 32. So let's look at the journal entry. Okay, so a company sells equipment that costs thirty thousand dollars. So cost was thirty thousand. Okay. Now we had accumulated depreciation of twelve thousand dollars. So our net book value was eighteen thousand dollars. We sold it for cash of twelve thousand. How do we record this journal entry? Okay. Well, very, well, again, we've done this type of style of question. Okay, so let's look at this. So we, we received cash for 12000 Okay, so right off the bat, debit cash. 
Now remember, back to chapter 9. When we remove a piece of plant property equipment or we want to sell it, we have to remove it from our books. So we have to remove the asset. We have to remove the accumulated depreciation. So this was accumulating as a credit. We have to back that out. Accumulated depreciation. Okay. Was $12,000. So we have to take the cost of the asset off the books. And the asset was 30000 as a result, we have a loss on sale of equipment or of the asset of $6,000. So normally, this $6,000 goes to the income statement, right? And that's why I said, okay, so in this scenario here, we have to back out the accounting gain or loss on the income statement. Why? Because we're going to include, because this is the amount we want to focus on. We want to focus on the cash proceeds that we received from the sale of that asset, not the gain or the loss, because that's accounting. We're interested in cash for the cash flow. Okay. So there's an example then of when we go to do our investing section. So in this case, we've already backed out the six thousand. Don't worry about that amount no more. Now we've got to recognize the twelve. Okay. So when in our investment section, okay, we'll have proceeds from sale of equipment, twelve thousand dollars. Again, we get this, all this from our journal entry. Now, again, we'll, we'll just—that's how you do it. And when you see a when you see an asset drop down in value on your balance sheet, that's why you likely reduce. Uh, your position, so you uh, dispose of the asset, or conversely, you might have bought more assets. So you got really got to read the, the information on what uh, what the example is telling you. So if we go to example QS, go to QS sixteen nine. So I'd like you to do QS sixteen eight, QS sixteen nine, and exercise sixteen six, and then we'll review that on Wednesday. But if we go to I'm just going to find that one. QS 16.9. Now, it's dealing with investing activities. So, calculate the cash paid for equipment during 2020. Okay. Well, equipment went up 300,000 or 300 to 328. Okay, fine. Accumulated depreciation went up. Usually, that's what would happen. And our long term investments went up. Okay. It only wants to, it only wants to calculate our cash paid for equipment. So equipment costing 150 was sold during 2020. Okay. So now we're given all this information of okay, well we can determine how we went up and how we went down. So I just want to look at my equipment here. And what I like to do is I look like to put it in the key format. So, with our equipment, we go from no, I said sixteen nine. Okay, so equipment. 300 up to 328. So we start at 300. And we end at 328. Now, just by looking at this, you might say, "Oh, we must have bought equipment, uh, paid cash for equipment of 28,000." Not necessarily. Okay. We got to watch too because sometimes the only way they bought equipment was through uh, purchasing or buy it through a long-term note. That's a non-cash transaction. So equipment costing 150 was sold during 2020. And then it said equipment was purchased during 2020. All right, so let's just knock off this equipment. Okay, so we sold 150. So 150. It costs 150, so we've got to take it off the books. As a result, profits for 2020 included a $30 loss on the sale of equipment. 
Okay, that would come into play if you were doing the operating session, but we're not. Um, now, a ten dollar profit on the sale of long term investments. Okay, well we're not we're not looking at investments yet. And depreciation expense recorded during 2020 total twenty bucks. Okay, so then what this is telling me is the difference between one. 300 minus 150 is 150. Okay, so the difference has to be the cost that we pay for our equipment. So the 150 then is minus uh, 328. We have, to, then we have to have purchased the equipment costing us $178. Okay. Now, what will be the same type of thing? Calculate the cash proceeds from the equipment sold during 2020. Well, how much is it worth? Now you have a bunch of information. You have enough information to calculate all this. Okay? Because you know your profit for 2020 included a $30, $30 loss. So what are the what are the proceeds gonna be? Well just start just start making your journal entry. Related to this, cash. The equipment was sold for 150. Or the equipment sold was cost cost 150. Again, how much cash did we receive for this sale? Well we we're told. Um Equipment, thirty dollar loss. Loss on the sale of equipment was thirty dollars. Okay. What's the accumulated depreciation? Well, we were told what the accumulated depreciation would be. Or maybe not. But we can also figure that out. Why? Well, we start out with 95. Okay. If we go from 95 down to, or now 95 up to 100, the accumulated appreciation for that year was. $20, then again, we're given all this information. It's at the bottom of the balance sheet. I can't do the reading for you. Okay. So 195 plus 1, so now we're at 115. Okay. So as a result, then, the accumulated depreciation related to the sale of equipment was 15 bucks. As a result, we're again reconstructing this journal entry to calculate to figure out what the cash proceeds were. Okay, so again, 150 then minus 30 minus 15 is 105. That had to have been the cash proceeds. Okay. So in the investing section, then it would look like this. Proceeds uh, from sale of equipment, $105. Okay. Uh, proceeds used for, or sorry, then we might have had um, cash paid for purchase of equipment, 178 So minus 178 plus the 105 that's our investing section. Okay. So this amount here, this loss on sale, that's a part of the Operating activity section that we add back the loss. Okay. So again, try the QS 16.8, try QS 16.9 on your own, and then take a look at exercise 16.6. Okay. So exercise 16.6.
has you dealing with, let me take a look here, uh, creating the cash flow section from operating activities. Again, so this should be, now we should be able to figure it, figure this out, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll start to take a little bit more in-depth uh, questions uh, related to the investing section on Thursday. Okay, have a good day and we'll talk to you tomorrow.